I am thrilled to be talking with Dominique Jones today. She has dedicated her career to ensuring that all New York City youth have access to opportunities that help them get a path towards a future success. Dominique is currently the executive director of Global Kids, and she's had many senior roles. For example, the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem, Food Bank of New York City, and New York City Administration for Ch Children's Services, lots of leadership roles. I am so thrilled, Dominique, to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I'm happy to be here. Um, it's always good to start your week in conversation with good people. So happy to be here with you, Annalisa. Dominique, let's start with your identity. And tell me, how did that shape you and your career and where you are today? Early in my life, there were folks who really did not have um, the opportunity to do, um, to go, um, to experience. And so I always made it my responsibility to like make sure that they could go and they could have a good time or they could experience all the um, wonderful things that I had the good fortune of being able to do. So similar like to go to the amusement park or to go to a play or to take dance lessons or, you know, so I would always ask my mom, you know, why can't my friends go? Um, and she would, you know, personally bring friends along, but then also advocate at my school and in the community for um, other young people to be able to participate. So I think that was kind of the beginnings of my my youth development career, because I felt like those experiences were really important to me um, and important to my development, important for my parents and my family to make sure I had them. So I wanted to make sure other young people had them. I've been um, really in this fight um, for most of my career. Um, you talk about being at the Administration for Children's Services. So my responsibilities there were working around young people who are um, leaving or potentially leaving foster care without permanency, without a family. So how do we ensure that they, one, have permanent connections to caring adults, but also have a future orientation? Um, me working at the food bank, it's around how do we help make sure that everyone has what they need to um, take care of themselves and take care of their families, not just addressing food insecurity, but addressing um, income security. Um, and then also now be, being on the ground, running um, two nonprofit, nonprofit organizations that are supporting directly young people, making sure that our programs and services are comprehensive and that all young people can access in a, in a very real way and, and can come out with um, strong outcomes, um, whether they be academic outcomes or future post-secondary outcomes. That's really been, you know, why I'm in this role. Dominique, your ascent from your passion and mm -hmm. wanting to open access to everyone, regardless mm -hmm. of race or gender, but allow experiences and potential to be uplifted. I want to talk about you specifically mm -hmm. and your leadership and how, I mean, were all the doors open to you? How did, how did you, how were you able to navigate your career and specifically, you know, that I wrote that book, The Myths of Success, mm -hmm, a one mm -hmm. of Color, Color's Guide to Leadership. Were there any myths that you believed were true and actually realized now that you are at the seat you are or on the way in your career? Yeah. Those are actually not true. Anything come to mind? I think sometimes it's been an improbable upward trajectory because you know, I feel that I was an underdog, right, in the fight. I wasn't the top um, uh, top student. Um, I wasn't um, always, I always talk, I tell people, you know, it's like I didn't have the perfect dismount, right? Like I always, at every turn, I kind of, I got off the balance beam, but, you know, there was a little wobble here or there. Um, but I think the thing was I got, I, I continued to get back on and I continued to try. And I think that if anything, that has really led to um, my 
um, my forward trajectory in my career and that people see that I push, push forward. Um, I push through, I, I, I continue to try new things and I continue to, um, uh, you know, also kind of lift as I can, as I move forward as well, because that's really important. That's really important to me. In terms of the myths, I think that it is true that people underestimate women of color in the workplace. I think it is true that people underestimate women of color in leadership. I don't know if it's intentional or not sometimes, but I think that as a world, we are conditioned um, to think of, of us as not being ready and not being, um, uh, what's the right word, um, able to truly navigate kind of all of the aspects, particularly in nonprofit leadership. That ain't true. <laughs> That ain't true. Um, you know, I found that I've had a varied career that has given me a lot of tools and that has given me a lot of experiences and I think has made me multilingual in this work. Um, I'm able to talk to um, program staff. I'm able to talk to donors. I'm able to talk to non-traditional partners, you know, traditional partners all in one breath because I've learned what their motivations are. I've learned um, what, the, what the things that they may find important and I'm able to um, engage at that level. So if anything, nonprofit leaders are nimble and women of color have you know, from the beginning time have had to be nimble um, in support of their communities and their goals. Dominique, it's, you're so humble. I mean, as a Spelman graduate and the awards that you've won and the roles that you've had. So I want to make sure we call out <laughs> what, a, what a badass you are mm -hmm. and that it hasn't been all the things handed to you, which is why you do the work you do. Mm -hmm. So I heard you say that you root for the underdog. It felt like maybe you were the underdog a bit in mm -hmm. not having the top grades. And yet you rose to, let's say, positions of power and influence because those same things that hold women of color back, not seeing the brilliance that we have, allowed you to develop skills, allow women of color to develop skills of flexibility, being nimble, mm -hmm. and particularly having multi, I love that you said multilingual because mm -hmm. yes, sometimes people call it code switching or assimilation, but it, there are some skills with that in that you can speak to so many different people and very well. Right. Like, even though I might not be from this valley, for example, me personally, wealthy background, white mm -hmm. young club, I've learned to be able to switch and connect in hopefully a, a value, like a, a still authentic to me. I'm still speaking for myself, but I'm able to connect with you and find ways of, of real genuine connection. I see you, Dominique, at, at these events that I've been able to attend with you that you build real genuine connection across the board. And I want to, I want to drill down on that because okay. <laughs> it seems like one of your, your power skills, which is the ability to connect. And so they're not, they're people that are easier to connect with. Right. right. And then there are people you're like, man, okay, put my cape on. I can do this. <laughs> it's going to put my, you know, yeah. Teeth. here we go. And so can we, can you talk to me about, well, I mean, I think, Connecting with people, being present is always, it's not a chore. I something I'd love and enjoy to do, but it's not easy. And I think that first of all, we've got to kind of um acknowledge for, for me, it, you know, I have to acknowledge that, you know, that it's not always easy to enter a room, and particularly a room with people who may or may not be like you, um, or and you have to kind of engage. Um um, to be present um, and to get what you need out of the room, but also to give people what they need too, right? So, you know, so I think that if anything, I've always come into new spaces wanting to learn, wanting to not learn about kind of what um, in, excites and motivates people, um, their experiences, um, their, you know, kind of why they're in these spaces and 
take really take all that in because if you really are about connected with people you also know that this is not going to be the first time you're going to interact with them i mean this is not going to be the last time you're going to interact with them this is going to be this is the first time and it's really your responsibility to get to know folks um to meet them where they are i mean which is a core youth development principle you don't kind of like try to force people into where you're trying to be you try to kind of connect with where they are and then I think from there it's just it's learning um and experiencing the moment with them together and trying to find even more connections for, for future interaction so I think that that's kind of how I approach I approach going into any space but I will again I will say it's you know I'm a I'm a introverted extrovert um, which is always interesting for me. I've, I'm, I have been shy, even though, um, you know, if I have a cause, I can be rah-rah. Um, but I think that I've had to recognize that in order for me to bring the, bring the most out of myself, I've got to get to know folks who are around the table and, um, and really connect with them in a way that is authentic um, and that is real. Um, you know, I was at a, a cocktail reception a couple of weeks ago and, you know, it's a different, it was a different setting, um, different people. Um, but from where I sat, I just was like, let me, let me connect with like, one or two new people in that setting. Um, and I find myself complimenting people on what they wear or what they said or what they achieved. And, you know, and that's real because I admire that, you know, I'm a, I, I'm not, you know, I, I like fashion. So I'm always looking at what people have on. I'm like, Ooh, that girl, that's, that's bad. That looks great. But from there, that's disarming for people, right? That's disarming. And that, you know, that you have, you build that connection from there and you can talk about anything. You can talk about anything, men and women, you talk about anything. You compliment somebody on what they got on. They're like open to talking about anything. <laughs> and, you know, and that's been kind of one of the one of the ways that I really am able to engage in a conversation. Dominique, in I love that you said you're an introverted extrovert. I would never have known there was any introvertedness about you. I mean, Dominique, just just for the for the audience audience here dynamic, just stands up, speaks her mind, shares a powerful story and anecdote. And it feels like I'm like, she likes the spotlight, like she just gets up and says it. So I want to make sure I name that. And so I really appreciate that you shared that <laughs> truly, you know, hot cocoa or wine and just hanging out by yourself also sounds incredibly sweet. So first that point, the second is that this idea that you can be yourself. Mm -hmm. And finding ways that feel genuine to you. I hear you say being curious and actually finding real ways to give someone a compliment that you genuinely appreciate. It feels like you're not, you're not, you're not trying to kiss ass here just for doing mm -hmm. that. You're actually trying to find something that you like about the other person. I found that that tip when you're with someone you actually maybe have a challenging relationship with. When you can try to find something you like, it helps to one for yourself to find that hmm, there is something that I can admire yeah. about the other person. And two, it is very disarming when someone gives you a compliment that says, wow, you see me. Thank mm -hmm. you for seeing me. Often in this rat race world, yeah. you don't feel seen. So I love, love, love that so much. One thing that you said, Dominique, that I want to ask you about is this idea mm -hmm. of future connection. Yeah. You said yeah. Not, it's not just the moment, right? You developed one or two connections at that um, gala banquet you went to, but you said earlier that you want to find ways that there's a future connection. Can you talk about that? Because it's, yeah. I mean, we're in a LinkedIn world or it feels like we're just so overwhelmed with social media. What does it mean to have a meaningful future interaction built into your idea of connection? Yeah. Well, you know, I also start in my engagement with people of how can I be of service to them, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, once we're talking and we're getting to know one another, um, I often find that, you know, I want to understand how I can be helpful um, as they're thinking through problems or wanting to connect with something or, or if they're just, you know, interested in an issue or a topic. 
And so I often find that the future always kind of for me starts with how can I be of service, right? How can I, you know, be helpful? But then once we kind of engage at that second stage of, you know, being of service to, to be, me being of service to them, we get to learn more about one another. And we actually, you know, I find that in those conversations, we're validating one another, we're empowering one another, we're sharing opportunities that we might know about. Um, and then we're also maybe talking about some challenges we might have, right? And so, um, so I think that those second stage conversations, that future conversation, you're really getting to know the person, know their needs and their advice. They're also getting to know you. So then it becomes a reciprocal converse, re relationship. It's not um, just like, what can I take from them, right? Or what can they take from me? It's about what can we do to build, and we're also finding commonality. So we're finding things of importance to one another, right? So, um, you know, if someone is really interested in um, uh, hunger issues, then, you know, I'm also, I'm able to talk a bit about that and share some resources or share some insight. Um, but I'm learning a bit more about what's important to them, right? What's important to them and how they can, um, and how we can be supportive of them as they're pursuing their interest or their, um, you know, whether it be a philanthropic interest, whether it be a volunteer interest, whether it be a policy interest. So I think it's, it's, it's that kind of, but I'm also thinking about, oh, you know, there's some opportunity in the work that I lead that they could be useful to. Right. Mm -hmm. They can help fill some pantry bags. <laughs> they can help um, engage in an advocacy effort. Right. So these are these are opportunities where we can find kind of that mutual benefit and that reciprocity. So so I, the second stage is really important because you're really helping to understand that person and you're also helping them to understand you. And and, and you know, together in the end, you might find some really opportunities real opportunities that y'all have built together, if that makes sense. There's a beauty in the deepening that goes beyond, I like your sweater, to I'd love to be of support to you, however yeah. possible, even mm -hmm. if it's a quick brainstorm. And in that brainstorm, finding shared connections, also vulnerability that I'm sharing a challenge with you, mm -hmm. and then offers of here's how you could help me or here's right. how I might be able to help you. So I, I love it because it's so built on genuine connection and often yep. the whole networking world feels, could feel superficial, but this just feels very Dominique and very, uh, a, a beautiful way of fostering just future, future collaboration yeah. connection. I mean, some of the meaningful personal professional connections that I have may have been based out of that, mm. you know, just based out of, you know, us building, learning from one another and, you know, hey, let me put you, let me introduce you to this person. And it's propelled them into a job or a career or, you know, or the, and it's just because we got to know one another, right? And and I think the same has happened for me. So I just don't discount that opportunity or the, that time. Can you talk about, Dominique, your introversion and mm -hmm. how you layer that on top of this? Do you do something beforehand afterwards or how do you balance your also your authentic yeah. personality with the connection piece right i think that um my introversion i think the pandemic i'm going to say created more introversion because um now we can connect online and we don't have to go places to talk to one another and I think that that had a, that had a role in me kind of getting into a, a cocoon a bit um and so I've had to develop some um intentional practices as I go out into the world and connect with one with with others and so some of that is about you know what I wear you know, and I know that might sound um, superficial, but I think it's important for me to build my spirit and my psyche to feel good in something. So like today I have this yellow um, top on. I'm very much about 
let's wear color because it's vibrant and it 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 definitely makes you feel alive and connected. It may draw people into you, right? And so that folks are coming to you to, you know, because of the, the color choice that you've worn, but it definitely sets the tone for how I want to be seen and be in the space um, with folks. Um, I think that um, also what has helped me to kind of get out of my introversion has been um, just uh, make being intentional about, okay, when I go into this space, um, who am I looking forward to seeing? And I'm going to make sure that I connect with those folks that I know already, but who don't I know who may be in the room and I want to make sure that I've connected with them, um, and, um, you know, started kind of the first phase of conversation. Um, because I think that that in itself, um, gives real meaning and intention to whatever you're, what, you know, wherever you're going, right? Um, I was at a breakfast a couple weeks ago and, and I was invited by a consultant that we have and they had shared with me, okay, these are the folks that are going to be there. And I said, okay, well, I want to make sure I connect with folks that represent this institution because I've learned a little bit about an initiative that they're working on and I want to get some more insight. So I really mapped it out. <laughs> like I, that's who I want. And, and, you know, some people may see, say that that just feels a little, um, you know, I don't, I, what's the right word, like staged or forced or, you know, I think it's intentional. It's intent, intentionality is so important. Something I tell my staff, like whenever we're doing something, we want to, we want to step, walk into it with intention, because if we have that, then we know what we need to get out of it. And we know how we're going to benefit from being in that space or place. Um, so I think that those are the things that I have really done to break me out of the kind of the, uh, the introversion, um, particularly in this time. I mean, I think it gets easier when you're with friends or you're with, you know, well, you know, colleagues that you love and care for. Um, you definitely um, feel at home and can, you know, and can can engage a little differently. But I want to replicate that same feeling <laughs> in other spaces because that's where you see my true authentic self kind of come out. And that's been in it. And I think if anything that's the thing that has, um, it took me a long time to be me in these spaces, right? I used to think I would have to have all the facts and all the data, or I would have to look a certain way, I have to be a certain way. And I realized a long time ago, no, you just have to be you and you have to show your commitment and, 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 and say it how you're going to say it. You know, you don't always have to you know, have a perfectly um, crafted sentence, um, but the meaning and the truth has to be in what you what you say and what you do. And so, I want to be that in every situation. Um, and it's it's doing those things that I've just talked about that enable me to do that. So beautiful, Dominique. Because often, as women of color, we think we need to be something else with all the strength and being flexible, nimble with others. That we have to be something else all the time. Yeah, but actually, the power comes in being ourselves, generally right. connecting, having intentions about what we're doing here, mm -hmm. finding also community and feeling affirmed in who we know. But then yeah. going out and yeah, connecting with those people who you would really benefit from, the organization will really benefit from and creating genuine collaboration. So I love that so much. It's so consistent with you. And if you know Dominique, she's so dynamic. And to go deeper to say with so much intention and thought built into the skill that has allowed her to show up with this bright yellow, beautiful, this, you know, countenance to, to, to be a son. So thank you, Dominique. With that, Dominique, are you ready for lightning round questions? Okay, let's go. <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Cooking or takeout? Cooking. Climb a mountain or jump from a plane? Jump from a plane. Have you ever worn socks with sandals? Yes. How would you rate your karaoke skills on a scale of one to 10, 10 being Mariah Carey? Maybe seven. 
What's a recent book you read? I'm reading um, Just Ask Questions book that was recommended the other day. So I'm not finished, but I'm reading it. What's your favorite way to practice self-care? Getting my nails done, a pedicure, mani-pedi. So what's a good professional development you've done? Um, the best professional development, I, the Columbia Senior Leaders Program, um, it really helped me to ground myself. It helped me to ground myself in my leadership and my story. What's your definition of a boss mama? She's the CEO of Walgreens and she's my Spellman sister and my sorority sister. We were made in the same chapter. Um, she's a boss mama. <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self? That it's going to be okay. You don't have to solve all the problems today. You can, it'll work itself out. And then where can we find you? Like LinkedIn, anywhere else? You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram, D-R-J-G-K-E-D. -G um, and then you can off find me at Global Kids, www.globalkids.org. Great. And then last question. Do you have a final ask, recommendations, or any parting thoughts to share? Um, I think, like I said, well, like I would tell my younger self, it's going to be okay. You'll get through it. You just have to stay present and don't detach. And I just hope that everyone continue to stay connected in this time and to support one another and be of service to each other. Thank you so much, Dominique, for joining us. What a lovely conversation. And I love so much the yellow and the advice and be ourselves and it will be okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Annalisa.